Epaphrodite Niligwondo survived the Tutsi genocide. In 1994, his two brothers were murdered in this district of the Rwandan capital. They were killing people here, where I'm standing. There were corpses everywhere, and they were thrown into the gutter here or in the mass grave there. The inhabitants of the Muhima neighborhood still live in the shadow of this building, built by Felician Kabuga, a once wealthy businessman, accused by international justice of financing and organizing the massacres. Epaphrodite lived near the building at the time. He escaped the Hutu militias, who massacred the majority of Tutsis in his neighborhood. After the genocide, he joined Ibuka, an organization of survivors supported by the government. He remembers the comings and goings of the militiamen. That building over there was the house of Felicien Kabuga. It hosted a base of the former ruling party, the MRND. The neighborhood's militiamen came to take their weapons here. They came from the north of the country. They came out of the house when they were ordered to go and kill. After more than 20 years on the run, Felicien Kabuga was arrested in France in 2020. He's suspected of being part of the Akazu, an extremist group close to the president. Before rubbing shoulders with the country's elite, Felicien Kabuga made his fortune in the blooming tea and coffee trade. He spent his youth deep in the hills of the Gichumbi region. His tea plantations are still there, as are his former employees. When I was a child, I knew he had a store in Rishaki, and he was doing trade. Then he moved to Kigali for business, and he came back to buy tea plantations here. Every time he came back to pay the salaries, everyone was happy. We saw him as a savior. Overlooking the tea crops, Felician Kabuga's house is all that is left of his fortune in his family village, Mukaranje. This is Kabuga's house. He used to stay here and throw parties. The representative of the district survivors, Anastas Kamizi Kunze, was 20 years old when the massacres began. When you talk to people here, they tell you that they knew Kabuga as an innocent, a good man because he was a businessman. But they only knew him until he was 30. What happened next in Kigali, people here don't know. At the time, Gichumbi's residents listened to Radio Libre de Mille Collines, a station encouraging massacres and hatred against Tutsis. Felicien Kabuga partly financed it and was chairman of his management committee. Il y avait there were a lot of messages saying that the Tutsis are enemies of the country, that you have to kill them. That's how a lot of extremists were convinced that they had to kill at a very high speed. Each year at the Kigali Genocide Memorial, more than 100,000 people pass by the list of the radio investors. Kabuga ranks third among donators. He'd contributed 500,000 Rwandan francs, a very large sum at the time. For his responsibilities within the extremist media, Kabuga will be tried for incitement to commit genocide. A few kilometers from the memorial, 4,000 victims of the massacre rest in the Nienza district. Ejid Huranga chairs the Association of Survivors, Ibuka, and asked for the transfer of Felician Kabuga so that he could be trialed in Rwanda rather than in the Netherlands, a request dismissed by the court. He was among the planners of the genocide, which means that during his trial, he'll be able to reveal other information that can be used in other trials. Others are still at large, in France, Belgium and the Netherlands, and also in Africa. Rwanda issued more than 40 international arrest warrants against suspected genocide perpetrators living in France. According to the Rwandan authorities, they are still pending. This gentleman, for example, Fulgence Kaishema, is still wanted. They're always trying to run away from justice. Voilà. The trial of Felicien Kabuga is an urgent matter for the government. We would like to see all the organizers of this genocide go to court. Time passes and people age. We learn that some of them died 10 or 15 years later, and they did not go to court. This is bad for the history of the country and for the victims. But Kabuga already pled not guilty. And even if he has no civil status, he's at least 87 years old. His lawyers have called for the prosecution to be discontinued due to his poor health.